yeah, this is a quickly thrown together episode. Do you guys want to hear a college hockey story? Episode 31. Quick shift. Quick shift pod. At Quick Shift Pod. Billy Smith. Grant Fear. Cujo. Some would All say goalies. Some would say Grant Fear liked uh, a few tendies up his nose. Mm. You know what that is? Nose that's tendies? A, that's a GameStop Reddit reference, bro. All right. You're not in the weeds. You don't understand. You don't get it. Son. <laughs> She said, have I got a little story for you? What you thought was your daddy was nothing but while you were sitting home alone at age 13. Your real daddy was dying. Sorry you didn't see him. But I'm dead or alive, Bon Jovi. Alive, Pearl Jam. Alive, Pearl Jam. That was awful, man. <laughs> and, and I and I would like give you credit when credit is due. That was just not good. That's... It was Scotty sounded like fucking right. Billy Joel over there compared to you. Oh, oh no. Uh, yeah, the rendition was awful. <laughs> yeah. But the creativity behind of it. The lyrics. Yes. I, I was yesterday. I, I actually didn't hear the lyrics because I was really <laughs> hung up on the uh, the delivery there. Yeah. All right, let me start it again. Son, she said, "Have I got a little story for you? What you thought was your daddy was nothing but." While you were sitting home alone at age 13, your real daddy was dying. Sorry you didn't see him, but I'm glad we talked. Jesus. That's a live. So uplifting, bro. By Pearl Jam. <laughs> good, you know, good way to go into the weekend with yeah, a nice yeah, uplifting God. anecdote. Jesus. Scott, yesterday was the anniversary of your dad, Tim's death. Yes, I, it was. I am trying to make light of a situation <laughs> where you had a tough week and you didn't really tell us what was actually bothering you. You had a moment of instability and, and your vulnerability wasn't allowed to come to the surface. I'm trying to say it's okay, guys. You're we saying all... you would just like, throw like, hey, look, it's a rough week for me. Like, give me a break. Yeah, it but also, and I understand that it was a rough week and, and I couldn't even imagine that, okay? So what I'm trying to do is break the ice with, first of all, a terrible rendition, but also just ingenious creativity to find a song with those lyrics. I guess. <laughs> Happy right. Friday. Google's a pretty uh, powerful search engine. Would you use chat GPT-4 <laughs> right. for that one? Yeah. No, what I do is I go deep into the music library. Uh, you know? So you, you are actually going through songs until you find something that you think is on theme for today's episode. Yeah, and the ether just, the song finds me. Oh. I, I will say I do that with the Victory Podcast. Mm. I'll go through the, the library and try to find a song that might match what we did on the episode. Well, you're a creative. Creative. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't want to. I don't want to gloat. Okay. <laughs> you aren't a gloat. I'm not no. a. No. I'm not interested in gloating. I know. Okay. I like it face value. It is what it is. If you fuck around, you find out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to Mr. Kyle Dubis. Dooby dooby doo. All right. Um, this, I assume, means that Sheldon Keefe is gone. Yes. Okay. Because when the pyramids start to fall, they all fall. Isn't Spezza the head coach? Spezza, he he was named the head coach. Am I? Did I make that up? No, he's a he's a part of the general management. All right. I what does that so mean? You, you're saying Spezza's already been named the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Saying that I heard a couple things. I might also inside be, info. I might also be like I don't know, smoking crack or something. I might be wrong. I feel like I heard that. Okay, well, I feel like I would have saw that. Uh, I would like to just say again that I'm not interested in gloating. All right, what I'm interested in is for the people of Toronto for the longtime Toronto Maple Leaf fans, to get what they deserved. And in return, I will get a team that is interesting to watch. So I'm not saying that, okay, listen, if Brendan Shanahan wants to fix this problem, Shanny's a smart guy. He is a smart guy. I don't know if he inherited Dubis or if he inherited Keefe. I don't know the, the lineage, okay? Whatever. Let's sweep that under the rug and let's start this over quickly. You pick up the phone, all right? You call Steve Eiserman. You say, Stevie, I want to talk to Drapes. I want Chris Draper to be my next general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's a Scarborough boy, all right? Both Shanny and, and Drapes, both Toronto kids, okay? We're going to do this the right way. 
We're going to do this across from each other because we've been in the trenches and won multiple Stanley Cups together. And we're going to do this right. And Drapes, you're going to hire the coach. So I'm just putting it out there in the ether because I, I want good things to happen to good people. And I want the Toronto Maple Leafs to get a team that the city can actually root for in a way that the rest of the world doesn't fucking hysterically laugh at them. I might have just made that whole thing up. I think you did. You are a Toronto boy at heart. I certainly am. Do you think, um, obviously, Dubas has had multiple opportunities to get this team through the playoffs, didn't, didn't make it happen. Do you think any of his comments, similar to the Rangers head coach, Gallant, it maybe had, expedited this a little bit? It actually, it, it definitely had a... Uh, Sorry. It definitely had <laughs> a... Uh, yes. Okay. The, the, uh, the condentation... I, I don't know if that's the word, don't think so. but there was a vibe that the two of them both threw off, like, uh, entitled. Might you been. need me more than I need you. Yes. When the reality is, no, unless you win, unless Lord Stanley is raised above your head, you don't, you don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have no weight in this conversation. If you win, you can stand up and you can put your testicles <laughs> on the table. You think Brendan Shanahan is sitting there going when they're cutting to those clips of uh, him doing all that stuff in the press box? I think he's going, "What the fuck is going on?" I think he's used to it, and I think he cringes like like a cringe. It's if gotta be can, uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's probably in his. I know Shanny. It's in his bones. His skin is crawling. Do you think he was bluffing, Dubis? Um, Which part? If the Montreal Canadiens call him and say, "Hey, I w we want you to be our GM. Come on over." Is he going? You have no, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, well, uh, this is a, a hypothetical question. I don't answer hypotheticals based <laughs> on hypotheticals. I mean, it, it, no, there is no chance that, that Kyle Dubas will get a call from any NHL team. No, but you know what he said. I know what he said. What did he say? He said that he will not take a, another general manager position if he gets let go from the Toronto Maple Leafs. So he's retiring? Well, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I, you know what, Kev? <laughs> I think you're... He's yes. hanging him up? Yeah. yeah. He's fucking 30-something years old, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's Wait. a kid. Look at him. He'll be, kid. I think he's saying, like, I'm not going to immediately run off and go somewhere. He's going to lay low for a while and resurface somewhere. Maybe Arizona. Right. Well, the assumption would be well, that, that you could also just lay low, then all of a sudden pick up the phone and go, hey, guys, I'm back. I'm ready. Arizona's <laughs> also dead because of, of the ducks. Right. Environment, well, yeah, environmental ducks. issues. Yeah. Um, Kev, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, so this is the Ontario Hockey League. This is the feeder system for the NHL. Uh, Canadian kids, we don't go to college. We go to the OHL. We learn to drink and be degenerates, and we drop out of school, and we chew tobacco, and we become hockey players. That's what the OHL is. Okay. Or It used to be that way anyways. I know these kids. They're all beauties, all right? They're all in the playoffs. They're a bunch of beauties. They're chasing a dream. They're all going to be rich one day, and they're going to grow up, and they're going to have families. But right now, they're beauties, okay? When I saw this, mm -hmm. this brought back a lot of memories, okay? But it also upset me. Okay. Did you play in the O? I certainly did. Uh, in the O? Spitfire? I was a Kingston Frontenac and uh -huh. an Owen Sound Plater. Okay. Okay? Nice. I played for two teams, and I dominated the league. Did you? Absolutely. How many points? Um... I think I had 100 my last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you were, you were a gamer then. I was one of the best players in the league. Oh, all right. Easily. Well, did you fight a lot or no? Yeah. I think I had uh, hundreds and hundreds of penalty minutes. Oh, wow. I was a, I was a complete fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> I was an absolute lunatic. Yeah. So uh, in, in this clip here, kid takes a penalty. It's not really a penalty. And then he gets into it with the, with the penalty box, uh, I guess. Official? Gen yeah. General manager of the penalty box. The official. The penalty yeah. box official. He tells him to sit the fuck down and shut up. Yeah. So look at these two. <laughs> wow. A lot of John. All right. This was insane to look, me. Yeah. To see that this man. All right. You put a badge on somebody. You put a badge in a, in a laminate. You get a lammy around somebody's neck. Sit the fuck but, down. But sit by the, the way, fuck down. He owned him. Well, I I mean, what's <laughs> see? This is the this is the the weird turn. Now all of a sudden they're friends. Yeah, they become buddies. 
And the kid <sighs> takes another penalty and comes back, and they're even closer you the think, second you time. You think it's just cooler heads prevailed? Like, let's not do this. My bad. Let's, like, make a... Well, it's like a grandfather scolding his, his grandchild. No, but he told him, sit the fuck down. I, I think, Kev, you know what? Maybe the respect was found. Somewhere okay, along yeah. the line, respect was found. Like, hey, let's not dial this up any further. Yeah. Let's yeah. love each other. Yeah. <laughs> Could I tell you why it triggered me? Sure. Two, two instances, okay? One instance, I don't know where we were. I think we were in Montreal, but I got a penalty, and it was hockey night in Canada. It was a Saturday, so they had the camera set up in the penalty box. When I got in, I tried to de-escalate, okay? <laughs> I don't want that fucking camera in my face while I'm screaming mad, and I just took a, a, a bad penalty, and what happens if my team scores, and now they're going to shame me with the camera? So I put a towel over the camera. You know what the guy did? I can't imagine he loved it. He took the towel off the camera. So I said, fine. I didn't say anything. I said, okay. I stood up, and I absolutely demolished and demoed that camera into a fucking thousand pieces. And then <laughs> What'd I that turned, cost you? And then I turned <laughs> to the gentleman, time? and I said, that was your fault, sir. And what'd you end up paying for that camera? I think I got a, a $2,500 <laughs> You probably dinger. paid full price for that camera. <laughs> I think it was a $2,500 fine. But okay. you don't want, though, to really let go and let it rip and smash a camera like that? Maybe worth $2,500. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Kevin and I had a conversation yesterday about what we want to do in the off season, and we kind of had interviews pop up. That's the kind of person I would love to have jump on the show. Well, if we could, if we could track that guy down well, hold and on. have him on the show for five minutes, ten well, minutes. Well, 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 hold on. Okay, the second, number two, Sean Avery, Steve Ott. All right, a legendary combo, both in the penalty box at the same time on the road in Boston. We were in Dallas Stars uniforms. Okay. Me and Otter went on such a tear with basically anyone in a 15-foot vicinity. We destroyed everyone in the arena, okay? Two of the greatest trash talkers in the history of the NHL on the same team, both pissed off and angry. We went on a tear, okay? Mike Medano actually ended up selling us out also in the, in the media. You could probably find that clip. But what happened was the guy in the box wrote a letter to the NHL, and I wish I, you know, I kept a letter because we had a copy because we were going to potentially uh, arbitrate it, all right? I was just moving too fast back then. I didn't keep the letter, but I should have kept the letter. It's probably somewhere. I but... hope, if you got the letter, forward it to By me, way... Otter. Listen, this guy wrote a letter and, and basically walked through all the terrible things we said and said that his 30 years... In, in in the original Boston Garden and TD Garden, he has never heard such awful things come out of a hockey player's mouth. Bold statement. All I... right, <laughs> and he f he he f he screwed us. We both got fined, and I think we both got suspended from it. And it was because of that guy's letter. I respect the hell out of letter writers. I love them. If you take the time to sit down and you're a wordsmith and you write a letter, you are angry, especially handwritten. Yeah, right, handwritten. Well, this is 2008. I mean, yeah. What kind people, of things were you saying? The yeah, worst. Like the worst. I mean, I, 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 I can't even. I'm trying to think yeah. like what could be so bad uh, right, that right. that they haven't heard before. Yeah. It was. Were you directing it at them or just everybody? Everyone. There was a there was a husband and wife. There was a sister group. There oh, was you were kids. In the, you were in the getting into the. Uh, oh, it was stands. the fans. It was oh, the yeah. other box. I don't know. We were. We were on one. Mike Medano almost retired after that game. I think he actually said to the media, I can't play on a team that these two two are both on. <laughs> Scotty, we should try to find that clip. And, Mar and, and Turco said the same thing, I believe. One, one could say that's kind of similar to being rude to uh, like a, wait, a waiter or a uh, wait staff. No, trust me. Let me tell no? you something. We didn't just go in there like crazed animals and start yelling at innocent people. They were asking for it? Well, yeah, saying, dirty I mean, Boston point. Bruin fans, you shitbags from Dorchester Pat and Southie passionate. who all think you're tough. That's what happened. And, and we said, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to find that clip. It's got to be around somewhere, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, this is the OHL. This is good hockey. Is these, good are hockey. The, these are the, this is the future. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. Did you see that? Empty netter? N the stick twirl after he buried an empty netter? A lot of people do that. What what um what percentage of this league would you say makes it to the show? Five percent, ten percent? Probably probably twelve. Twelve percent. Yeah, um, really? it's that low. Oh yeah. I mean that's it's you yeah, know that's, that's actually right. pretty high. There there's four hundred right. players in the I league. There's a, a lot of teams. By, if you, right, and if you did it by you broke it down by team, twenty four guys on a roster, maybe three four are making it. 
Luck. I mean, listen, I we'll I play played a few with, games. Not, yeah. How many of them play five hundred? Right. Games? Dan Snyder, ten percent. Yeah. Adam Mayer, um, Curtis Sanford. Like, there's like five guys mm-hmm. that I played with that ended up having a decent NHL career. Yeah, and that's on two teams over a four year period. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys go by the wayside, but yeah. you learn how to. I mean, you learn how to do a lot of things in that league. Yeah. Well, we really went down a rabbit hole there. Uh, we had one game last night. We had, well, I guess really we had two games last night. Went into quadruple overtime. Uh, Panthers-Hurricanes. We jump in here the last minute of the third. Montour has a pretty good opportunity to, to put it away. And, and notice that you didn't see any of these fucking amateurs pulling out mustard packs on the bench. Yeah. This is big <laughs> boy you time. No yeah. You know, we're not mm-hmm. playing these silly games. Mm-hmm. Tricks are for kids, okay? I told you, and I don't want to say it because it is very early. First of all, oh, that was crazy. Uh, I mean... That was wild. Yeah. But uh, uh, Gudis, Gudis hit a couple of guys. He folded a couple of tents. All right, last night. Mm-hmm. This guy is a warrior. I said, Carolina, they don't have it. Florida's going to take it to them. In my opinion, I know that they were possibly outshot. I think the Florida Panthers really put the pace on on the Carolina Pan- mm-hmm. uh, uh whatever the fuck they're Hurricanes. called last night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kev, I mean, your boy stood on his head for stood on his head. Those guys uh, both placed uh, uh, faced over sixty shots. Right? Yeah, that yeah. is wild. Yeah. That's pretty. Oh, crazy. by the way, yeah, I was I love him. To take and and yeah, w- him. when you saw him when they won in overtime, mm-hmm. Roberto Luongo. <laughs> you know, you so know much emotion at him. That's the most Boom. emotion I've ever seen at him. Boom, that's how you win. It is how you win. Game one. You, yeah, he's fine. In- fair enough. Guy played long enough. He yeah, can he give did. her one of these. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not jumping up and down, banging the fucking right, ceiling. Right, good old-fashioned Jeter fist. Boom. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's the I difference. Like yeah. That's the difference. I went to sleep after the first overtime, and I rolled over in the middle of the night at some point and saw like a laundry <laughs> list of text messages. I was like, oh, my God. I yeah. yeah. I thought something bad happened. I, was, I, was like, I sent you one. I said, you still in this? It was, long was, it was a marathon, yeah, it really boy. Was. And they oh, still God. all looked quick. Both mm-hmm. teams looked like they both had jump. Mm-hmm. I guess that was the, the they must three have been days doing off. Must, they must have been doing mustard packs in the locker yeah, room. Yeah, maybe they were periods. hitting it, hitting the musties. Uh, that, you know, listen, it's a, I get it. All right, goalie interference. If you touch the goalie now, it's no goal. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, that's not uh, as egregious a call. I mean, I, I, th- I think that's got to be no goal. Here comes the polish. No, uh, I agree with the call. I know. I'm, I, I don't. I think it should have been a goal. I disagree. Well, the old days. I mean, I'm not polishing anything. That's I, a goal. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, fuck. You barely touched him. But yeah. I'm saying they call. That's what the call always is, right? I mean, I, I, I've seen far worse calls in this uh, playoff series. I think it's yeah. because it's an overtime. Truly, I think if it wasn't an overtime, that's a goal. Are you saying that because you are pulling for Carolina? Like no, I just, a, a, I just didn't a think Freddy it was. Guy? No, yeah. no, it's not. It <laughs> no, is. That's not why. That's Be, not why. Uh, okay. Um, I just. You know, I, I've seen, like I said, I've seen far worse calls. All right. Well, That's the question would be if this was a disallowed goal in the Islander series, would Kev take the same position? Well, I already did. I already took the same position because the Islanders were on the other end of a horrendous call by the officials, and they lost the game because of it. So. Yeah, the, the high-sticking call. Yeah. Is that a fact? Yeah. That is a fact, yeah. And he, seems he, so long ago. He, he wore it. It does seem so long ago. It, was, yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah. They really have created some space between <laughs> yeah. these games. Yeah. It feels like two years yeah. ago, but yeah, that yeah. did happen. And, uh, hey... Hell of a segue right there because we go into the Matthew Kachuk overtime goal here. And uh, can we talk about separation? We want to talk about <laughs> watch the separation that he creates. He flags the guys. I mean, it's separation like I've never seen before in my entire life. Give it to me. Oh boy. Also, watch the watch the hold on. Look, everybody get away. Get away. Mm-hmm. Separation. Let's just walk it off. He's he wanted to walk it off. He wanted everyone. He to go wanted everyone to, to just walk off and go blast right into the tunnel. So what I've been told, and I don't know, maybe you guys aren't in touch with pop culture as much. And by the way, do not jump on on Bob. All right, after a win, do not jump into Bob's arms. Stay away from Bob. Okay, just let him celebrate whatever way he needs to celebrate. What what Kachuk was doing, he was mimicking Bo Jackson. Oh, Bo Jackson. Did something. I don't know if it was a touchdown or a home run. Yeah, it was a touchdown. Oh, and he ran out. Right. And he ran out. And he pointed to the guys. Let's go. We're out of here. Okay. So that's what makes this even cooler. Any, any, any credit for me? You 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 told me that. Well, I made the clip on Quick Shift Podcast at around oh, is midnight, that right? La- <laughs> midnight last night. You learned that from your own clip. And I and I put Bo Jackson and Kachuk together. Who told you? 
my brain, my big fucking brain. Your big fat fucking brain? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Unbelievable. You didn't hear that in like some weird hockey circle? <laughs> Look at this. Uh, on my father's grave. That's it, Kev. Right. That's good, right? It's completely yeah. reasonable. Yeah. On... Oh, God. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> Do not jump on him. Ooh. I didn't even see that. Don't jump on him, Forsling. Christ look Almighty! Look at, look at that! Yeah. Look at that separation. <laughs> He's saying to the locker room, to the dressing room. Unbelievable! Yeah, don't you have to work that one out beforehand? Like, yo, if we're let's burying, walk it off. off. Yeah. Well, I'll give give the guys a heads up. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. You gotta I'm referencing. Way, I, don't, a, I, I, don't, I don't like that you guys do this now. Where you where, you just, where you just put the headphones on and you're gone and you just abandon me? I'm not abandoning you, bro. I'm just gonna be in my <laughs> office. <laughs> Episode thirty-one.